Welcome to module four. In this week, we're going to talk about database. We're dealing with chapter one and chapter two. The slide numbers are a bit long, so we'll be skipping some of these slides. We'll focus on the normalization as well. So data. Data is um, any Thing that um, we get to process right or anything that we get to obtain here's an example in a uh, League of Legends game uh, an online multiplayer game where as you can see you see a lot of uh, different um, text different numbers different colors different movements all of those are data right so in data, there are many types of data. There's transport, graphical, geographical, cultural, scientific, financial, meteorological, natural, and statistical, right? And what are what this data can be used for? It can be used for calculating, reasoning, and planning, right? So now what is information, right? So we do get to gather a lot of data. And then once we process that data, and as humans in our brain, it becomes information, right? So as you can see in the computer sense that it will basically get this ones and zeros and process that to become an information, right? And here is the hierarchy, right? So first you have data, information, knowledge, then become wisdom. So data is, um, what you see let's say a traffic light you see the red light right you see the intersection okay and you um, with knowledge i mean with what you've learned it becomes information because you do know that the meaning is that's a red light on this certain intersection right okay um then it becomes knowledge when you now know what it really is for right um if it's a red, you should stop. And if it's green, you should go, right? As for wisdom now, this is more for the decision-making process. Even though it's red, the traffic light is red, you can still actually go ahead and pass, pass the intersection, right? But again, as with wisdom, you know that to be safe, you better stop the car on a red light. So data helps you improve processes. Data helps you understand and improve business processes so you can reduce wasted money and time. So the more data or insights you can grab for a certain process in your organization, the better it will help you, right? It could be helpful in such a way that you can drive down the cost, increase the profit, increase engagement, maximize the utilization, and so on and so forth. So we have data, but we have to store it somewhere. And that's now data storage has become very important as it protects and retrieves your data whatever you need. Since data can now be stored in the cloud, the secure feature also increases. Right? So again, storage is important as well so that you can easily uh, organize your data as well. In, uh, a very good easy analogy with um, using data storage such as a database is Let's say you have, uh, you're have you a kid and you have toys, right? When you have toys, you can easily grab them whenever you can, right? But you don't know which one is which and where they are. However, um, when you put them in a toy box, aka uh, database storage or a data storage, right? You do know that you only need to look at one place and you can even organize the data, okay? So digital data is represented using the binary numbers ones and zero. So these are the ones and zeros you see like in the movie in the matrix, right? So these ones and zeros um, represents the smallest element of data because computers can only store ones and zeros. And then they just basically change this up into a human readable format and making it to be translated. So with data, how do we capture data? There are a lot of sensors and uh, detection um, equipment, right? So these are some of these. 
um, for example, the wireless sensor, right? Um, it needs to uh, connect with the Ethernet, right? And the Ethernet would connect to an energy manager uh, system and it can pass along that data in the cloud. Also, um, it can only also be used to check for quality, right? So let's say a vision sensor can expect if a certain thing is uh, of, of a good quality, the correct size, right? And if it's a pass or fail, and then send that to a dashboard. So some data modeling concept, right? Um, to organize data, we put them in database. So an example would be the Microsoft Excel, a spreadsheet, where we can store data in an organized manner, right? Um, but we do have to define a schema. A schema is a representation of plan in the form of a plan or model. It gives structure, right? Uh, it organizes things as well. So with database, it should be organized and decoupled, right? Um, so schema defines you like the metadata. For example, let's just head back for column one, uh, column A, let's say you want that to be a list of names, right? The column B would be a list of uh, first name and the column C list of last name, column D, let's say the ID number and so on and so forth. And now with the spreadsheet or database, you can actually lock in what, what type of data that should be entered in those. Let's say for column A, B and C, these can only be a string of characters, while as in column D should only be numbers. So um, in the database, we do define uh, schemas, right? And we have this, what we call three level schema. The three level schema, we have the external, logical and internal, right? So to map them out, the external schema is the view. It's, it means that it is what the humans see. The logical uh, schema is basically the, um, also the conceptual schema. It's the one that defines the logic. And the internal schema is the one that defines the physical, right? So to address this more is view hides the rest of the database, right? I only see um, the interface. Let's now give a example, right? An ATM machine. An ATM machine would um, show me only the uh, the prompt, right? Insert the card here, deposit this, click yes, enter numbers, and it hides away the logical, which it's what's it, whatever it's processing behind the scenes, right? Um, the physical as well is the physical storage structure and access paths. So as you can see the three levels of abstraction. When you have the uh, ATM machine, you see an English text, right? And that English text would now be converted to a, let's say a SQL query. It's a, a query language used by most databases, right? Um, and basically the, the one that you type, the yes and no's, it will convert it to, let's say a select from this database where this customer ID is let's say my ID, right? So once it uses that SQL curly, um, it will now convert that to binary language as they can only be understood by machines. So just to make this clear, we can just add up at the top where the user interacts with the external schema, right? And that's the only thing that the user sees. This is another uh, graph to show that, again, the user interacts with the application. It do does not directly interact with the database management system, right? The database management system is um, holds a database and also the definition of the database, right? The structure. So the example ready with the ATM, right? So simplified view of the database development process. You first need to gather your information requirements, structure on that, create an analysis, and then now conceptualize the data model, right? And once you conceptualize the data model and the physical design as well for, let's say, whatever uh, database you're going to use, you can now um, 
execute that database creation script so that it populates your database the structure so here's a, a data model diagram using the ellis barker notation right as you can see uh the person right uh, has some attributes the person object has some attributes which is a name birthday and a number right it can take a role of employee which has attributes as well the payroll number start date and salary uh, an employee uh, can be a full-time employee or part-time employee so basically mapping things out like this one right would help you uh, create your information from your information requirements to basically a data model for your organization so here's an example of a SQL to create a, a, a table, a script to create a table, right? So this would create a person a table, aka this, for example, this object or table, right? And you would basically define the attributes that you want, right? And also you want to limit which data types you would allow it to have. So name can be characters, but date should be a date format right the identifier should be a number and some fields you can restrict to being not null meaning you cannot enter empty or blank but some of them can be blank right there's also a primary key to identify the table's unique key or uniqueness and also you can also add foreign keys so that it will basically map to the other table let's say uh, you have a table called property right so that it would grab data from that table as well so data model and concepts, there's um, the entity, um, the object, right? The person, the thing, right? And the attributes are basically pieces of data about the object or entity. And this is a bigger scale of how it looks like when you model stuff, right? We can also start with a country here on the very bottom, right? A country can have one or more cities, right? And another one you can see is on the left, right? You would see an actor has a one too many relationships. So an actor can be a film actor, right? So in the films, the films can have uh, one or many film actors, right? It could have one or many film categories, right? So how do I know that? So there's notations that we can talk about later. So another example of um, creating uh, the object and its attributes are, for example, you have a strawberry jam, right? You have a seal. Uh, is it broken or not? You can store that in the database and other stuff such as what materials was used, what is the name, the expiration date, production number, and the price. The production number would be our unique ID for this object, right? The strawberry jam. Unnormalized data would be just grabbing all the things without putting a structure, right? So the first normal form, uh, we're now talking about normalization, is you want to eliminate repeating groups and create a separate table for each set of data and uh, identify each set of related data with a primary key. So in this case, look at this violation, right? You do have this um, rows that have similar branch HOD, right, um, and office telephone number. To fix that, right, um, let's say you change, no, so with the violation, the problem is when you want to update now the HOD, let's say the head of department, right, and let's say Mr. X no longer works and Mr. Y is the new head of department, you have to update each and every one of them. You don't want that it wastes resources right so what you want to do instead is create a branch table right in that branch table you can now just update the cse branch right and just change the mr y to mr z or mr x and back again and the office cell phone number now if we do want to update the um all the managers for all of the same branch you can just basically change in the branch table so Another first normal form violation, as you can see, the telephone numbers here are a lot, right? 
what you can do instead is um, maybe put them in two different columns, right? But again, that might not work. It's better to maybe create separate, right? Uh, two of the same and maybe different telephone numbers. Or maybe put them in a different table, right? Because this one is still not that it's a poorly designed. Uh, you don't want a repeating first name and uh, surname here when you look at the data. What you can use instead is have a different table where you have a customer name table and you have a customer telephone number where it maps per customer ID, right? Less redundancy, less problem in insert, update, or delete. So instead of just having one table or meaning uh, one lookup table, right? You would have several tables so that you don't have redundant data. The second normal form is now, it first has to be in the first normal form and every non-prime attribute of the uh, dependent of the whole every candidate key and should not have a partial dependency. So what is a partial dependency? It means that um, a column or an attribute is dependent on one attribute as well, right? So as you can see, if let's say Mr. J is always um, going, to be, to be going to be subject ID one, as you can see in the row three, right? And also Mr. C was, was always gonna be number two. So might as well create a table for them, right? Because again, the teacher is dependent to subject ID. So if that's the case, why not just put that in a separate table? So you don't have to keep repeating two attributes at the same time. Okay, you can eat, even add more info like salary, etc. So here's another example where you have a manufacturer model, model full name, manufacturer country. And at the first glimpse, you would already see that the manufacturer country is dependent on the manufacturer. So hence, let's separate them together, right? As you can see, it's now being separated where there's um, electric toothbrush manufacturer table and electric toothbrush models. Uh, third normal form is it has to be in second normal form and uh, the non-prime key uh, should be is transitively dependent on any key it should not okay all the non-prime attributes must depend only on the candidate keys so what is an example so let's say you have the total marks right it's the dependent upon uh, exam name and this is not part of the primary key so um, this is a transitive dependency, right? So you would want to maybe uh, move this away and create an exam table, right? Another example, when we have a terminant winners table, right? And as you can see, uh, it has transitive dependency on the uh, winner attribute for the winner's date of birth and you do want to separate that so acid compliance um, to have um, easy definitions atomicity is basically success or fail there's no halfway consistency is preventing corruption from legal transaction and it makes sure that the data when you access it's always the same data so it has always the same value Isolation means uh, incomplete transactions are not visible. It does not affect the uh, data inside the database. Um, duration, um, or actually it could be durability, right, um, is recorded in non-volatile memory, right? Let me double check that because I think that's a typo. Acid compliant. Yeah, durability. This should be durability and let's fix this now. That was a weird one. Okay, so it means that um, it is recorded in non-volatile memory. It means that it's recorded in the storage, right? In your hard disk drive and not in RAM. Because the RAM, whenever you shut down your computer, it just goes away. A little bit more advanced here. We have BCNF, which is the boy, boys, uh, cod, 
normal form, which is an advanced form of the third normal form, right? So given the college enrollment table, as you can see, you have um, the student ID, subject, and professor, and you can see the professor is P Java and the subject is Java. And then you ha now have another professor P Java 2 in the Java class, right? So what you can see now is um, the student ID and subject uh, is pertaining to the professor, right? Student ID subject goes to a professor. Another student ID and subject pertains to the professor, right? And now when we have a professor that has a connection to the subject, it is a prime attribute because a professor can is only related to a subject, right? So P Java two or P Java one doesn't read really teach C plus plus C sharp or Java uh, or those two things, right? And then so with that, um, professor can find the subject and um, it's not a super key, right? So what you want to do is again separate the student table and professor table, and what you can do instead is have a student and associate that with the professor, because the professor itself would have the subject and the professor name. And the next thing you'd want to do is look for um, SQL queries tutorials. Let's see if we can see one. SQL, 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 SQL. Right, um, you can start learning and I can just click this one, the first one. And let's say we have a sample table. We can go to the editor and maybe write Okay, so for example, I have a table, the syntax would be select star and from which table employee EMP details. I can submit that, I can zoom this a bit so you can see clearly. All right, submit. And I was able to produce the employees table, right? So you can continue using this to do more queries, right? So I'd like to show you as well uh, databases, right? So the, we, we have what we call SQL and it's called structured query language, right? In structured query language, the popular um, database management system is like MySQL which is an open source relational database management SQL, right? Uh, another thing you can look at is the Postgres SQL. And it's basically a open source and free uh, relational database management system. It uses also the SQL, right? Uh, the difference is the MySQL has free version, but um, the community version is the paid one, right? So these are SQ uh, SQL types. Um, there's a lot more like uh, Microsoft SQL Server, which is MS SQL, right? Um, now we can do a paradigm shift with NoSQL. It basically is a, um, it, it's not a non-relational database, right? And basically NoSQL means uh, non-relational, right? Um, and then the popular ones with NoSQL are basically MongoDB, and MongoDB has a good resource as well. Um, I use some of them. They have free tier for the cloud version. Um, also the Learn, the MongoDB University is a great, great resource and I grabbed the first certification as well, right? Uh, it has a different kind of query. It uses JavaScript. Um, it doesn't have, it has a NoSQL databases has very flexible um, uh, uh, structure. Right, um, key value store could be like Redis and also memcache. So, Redis is basically in memory, right? Using your RAM, uh, memcache as well, right? So, going back to NoSQL, we have MongoDB and also Amazon Web Services created their own. It's called uh, Amazon AWS DynamoDB. There's also free here, right? Um, a new type of database is coming where it's also uh, NoSQL and relational is FaunaDB. So do check this out, one of the new ones.